Hello and welcome back to another guide for Warhammer 40k. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our composition building guides. I got a special something for you today. We're calling it the Arcane Enchanters as a build. And the Arcane Enchanters is definitely something that is very deep in the bag of tricks as we have seen quite a few builds by now. Uh, but I wanted to showcase something a little bit unorthodox, but yet very much playable. And in order to pull this off, you either need a Purgator or a Justicar. The Purgator is slightly better, although the Justicar can do it a bit earlier. However, I would recommend going for the Purgator. And the ability that we're looking for is called Arcane Weapon. So, when I originally started the game, I glossed over it and was like, hmm, yeah, well, not really my type of tea. Now, I could understand why you would think that as well, but give me a second and we're going to explore whether or not that is worth it. So, the core idea of this build is essentially to enhance someone else's weapon. Uh, Arcane Weapon um, depletes all of the ammunition um, of the Purgator and gives a bonus based on the amount of ammo that that they uh, that they depleted so the standard is for two will points you're basically uh, getting plus one damage and plus one crit damage per two ammunition which is fine so that is okay um, but if you activate the warp charge so the overcharge here you're essentially getting plus one damage per ammo depleted and that is both for uh, normal damage and for crit to my understanding so um, you ask yourself then, hmm, okay, that's still three will, uh, will points. What exactly do, uh, does uh, that mean? Oh, by the way, I stand corrected. It is with the uh, activation, it is one damage per one ammo, but still one um, crit damage per two ammo. So you still ask yourself, uh, well, for that, uh, how much do we actually get out of it? And here's the kicker. If you're building it correctly, you can get up to 13 ammunition. So uh, let that sink in. That is 13 uh, damage plus six crit damage for a single uh, shot. So we're looking at plus 19 damage on a weapon. Now there is, of course, the further optimization of that. Uh, as, as in the big fat Psy Cannons, because the Psy Cannons will apply that damage in their entire explosion burst radius. So if you can find the right gear, um, you will deal that plus 19 damage to everyone in the explosion radius, plus, of course, the normal damage of the weapon. You can see how this becomes crazy very soon. So let's go through my uh, team setup and what everybody's role is, and then we're going to see some game footage. All right, here we go. Good. From left to right, in order to pull this off, you uh, will need two purchasers. Technically, others would work as well. Uh, you could uh, use a chaplain and a purgator, but in a nutshell, you have one support purgator and one damage dealing purgator. Let's start with the core of the build. The support purgator wants to have as much willpower as humanly possible uh, because that is what they want uh, to uh, use in order to upgrade the damage of someone else. Secondly, they want an as big ammo clip as possible. And thirdly, they want to um, reload as often as possible. And I think I've um, for free without spending actions, that is. And I think I found a nice little happy medium for it. So uh, Zoe here as uh, the purchaser uh, does have uh, the ability for arcane weapons. That's what you need. Then secondly, I would suggest uh, grabbing enduring reflexes on your way. And then thirdly, you want to uh, maximize the ammo of your weapon, as well as go all the way down here to rapid reload, uh, together, uh, together with enduring reflexes, rapid reload triggers twice. So that means two times when you're unloading your clip, uh, you can, um, without spending another AP, just reload your weapon per turn that is so that combination is super super strong which then brings you to the question all right um, how do i set that off reliably and uh, that is um, where focus uh, comes in uh, into play currently uh, we're uh, rocking a, a loadout with an armor that gives extra focus down here 
20% extra focus. Uh, in this case, it's Legion of uh, the Will. There are a couple of other armors uh, that uh, you could run. You could uh, go with extra AP, uh, Cantus Vembrance, uh, for instance, and quite a few of uh, them actually give you um, focus if you are looking for that. So that 20 to 30 uh, focus will basically turn your um, uh, chance of, uh, it's actually a better armor even. So let's go for it. We're losing a few willpower, three to be precise, but we're getting a much higher focus rate. So we're now at, with phase shield, we're at 90% chance for reload. And that is great. Uh, anything else in the armor should be willpower. Good, then moving on, um, we want the weapon with the most ammunition and there are a couple of competitors uh, there. Just wanted to showcase a few storm bolters that, uh, that are relevant. The by far best weapon in the game to do that is Eternal Wrath. It's a tier three weapon that comes with eight ammunition as a standard. Another good one is Thorn's Glory, which comes with six ammunition as a standard. And yet another good one is Credo, which is a level one weapon, which is potentially where you're going to start with five base ammunition. There are other options as well uh, with silencers. The by, by far best option there would be Valiant Disruption, which is a level two weapon with seven ammunition. So point being is whatever you're uh, picking, um, it needs to have a lot of ammunition and typically storm boulders and silencers are uh, falling nicely into that category. Um, on top of it, you will, uh, when you start with 8 ammo, you will get plus 2 ammo from uh, the uh, passive abilities. And then I suggest you're farming for an extended magazine um, and level 3, that extended magazine gives plus 3 ammo, which is how you can get all the way up to 13 ammunition. So finally, as a melee loadout, I am uh, rocking Fortitude which gives a 25% um, uh, Aegis chance, plus 40 is 65%, and just very good uh, resistances overall. So it's a well-balanced uh, character in that regard. 15 uh, willpower. I suggest you are also running the stratagem for willpower refill, um, simply because then you basically make that 30 uh, will points. The other part, or the other core part of uh, this build is uh, another uh, purchaser who is going to use the strongest Psy weapon that you can. Um, as for the build, you're really just wanting to have um, a Psy weapon. If you have more ammunition, that's great. If you can spare kind of uh, the extra uh, utility slot for grenades, great. If you want to have astral aim, also fine for that automatic crit. All of that is okay, but really you just need uh, this here. Um, because here we're having an upgrade for the psychic onslaught area plus one and that is what we're looking for because it will make the overall impact area larger. Now in terms of loadout um, I have been running a power armor with an extra um, equipment slot. There are plenty of them around. Heart of Purity is, is the one here. Really I'm just looking for that plus, um, plus one passive slot. Uh, as for the passive slot, we're going with uh, the auto uh, sensors, so extra crit damage and blessed greaves uh, for tier 3 extra uh, crit damage. So we're rocking 35% normal crit damage, uh, which the weapon and other stuff will come on top of it. But that's important. Uh, the grenade is simply as a nice little extra gimmick uh, since we do have a grenade slot. Now, to the uh, main protagonist, the Psy Cannon. There are plenty of Psy Cannons uh, that work for it. A normal Psy Cannon has an area of two. With the upgraded uh, version, if you specialize in it, their area becomes three. But none other than Titan's Roar has an actual area of four as a base. Upgraded, that is five. And please trust me, area five is massive. That is a ginormous area for Psychic Onslaught. So we're going to use our will points and our ammunition to basically blast six points of damage as a base into a really, really, really big area. Keep in mind, on top of that, um, we have four crit damage here and the 19 damage that comes on top of it. So in terms of a crit, we would be rocking at 29 points of damage in a, a area of six. That is a nuclear explosion. So 
this is the core of the team. Now we're going to go for a little bit uh, quicker through the other stuff. I like to run with a chaplain, uh, simply because the chaplain does have uh, the entorment of Guidance, which is a litany that allows you to gain overall plus 35% uh, crit, and then uh, the upgrade uh, goes for another 10%, another 10%. So I think it's overall 50% uh, ranged crit attack, and that means you're critting a lot. Uh, also, also it allows him to crit and when he crits he, there is the passive here mental focus uh, which means he regains uh, uh, he regains an AP so really that is all he's good for but you can of course optimize the build a little bit uh, since the majority um, of the important stuff is here you can still get an equipment uh, slot out of it and just equip the character well and uh, well equipped in my book um, for this particular uh, setup is have a higher uh, focus um, uh, with with your character this one here is running 25 uh, focus so that uh, brings it up to 75 percent chance for every crit uh, to kind of regain an ap that's a very solid extra ap that he's rocking every single round on top of it we do have a little bit of willpower on uh, um, uh, on top of it secondly um, as a melee weapon as a cross shears I like to run uh, the Hammer of the Righteous because it does have the enhanced litanies. Uh, Chaplain does not pay will points to maintain an active litany. That's just fantastic uh, because we can use all of the will points for something else. As for the um, actual uh, uh, will point spending, I am using R of Photos for a relatively good range, a relatively good base damage, 6. But then on top of it, crit plus um, more damage. So we're looking at um, 50, um, uh, at seven points of damage plus 20% crit chance um, and a 75% chance of auto reloading, which is just a nice little added uh, feature so that he doesn't need to spend um, uh, action points in order to reload. With um, decent ammunition, we're going to be fine. Uh, so. This is just me trying to continuously deal damage. For the, um, for the uh, passive equipment that I freed up, we're going for another crit uh, chance. And you can see that without the litany, uh, we're already having 55% uh, crit chance on the IR of Photos, another 50% from the uh, litany on top of it, meaning we're uh, likely going to crit every single time, which is just fantastic. Um, then we still do have um, options left over for the rest uh, for the remaining war gear slot and I potentially will uh, fall in line with what the others are doing and either get range that takes the other option is uh, more focus um, or if you uh, feel like it uh, just get uh, the warding or um, if you have problems with uh, sustain uh, we can also use a Medikai uh, school. This guy is not the main damage dealer, so I'll just equip it as if I would. You can even use an extractor school, whatever. That uh, that character already is doing what they're supposed to do by supporting. Finally, the apothecary that we're using as uh, the last uh, mm, uh, supporter here. I've used a mass uh, mm, uh, school uh, build. And uh, the, uh, what, what is relevant for the apothecary is I only use him in this uh, particular uh, case for the schools. You can put whatever you want as the uh, fourth in there. You could use another purchaser uh, for all I care, or you're using a Justicar, uh, which potentially would be a nice, uh, a nice option, uh, shifting over ability points, plus also doing uh, even more astral aim. But the way that I'm playing the combination is I like uh, the Apothecary because uh, they can heal uh, with their will points and they can use um, their uh, healers, uh, their, their skulls in order to do um, additional stuff. And what they are doing um, is we're basically uh, running an armor that I haven't uh, used in a while, uh, which is called Prodigy's Mantle. Server skulls have plus three ammo and uh, four additional range, which is cool. 
And with that, uh, we do have seven Hailer Skulls, so anything that survives, uh, we have enough Mimic Beacons, and we got 10 Auto Reloaders. That's really the key here. If anyone ever in this team uh, gets out of ammunition, we're just there to reload it. And that's such a powerful support, in my uh, perspective, because it is a lot of AP that you're uh, saving. On top of it, just uh, so that they are competitive as well. We have used um, a storm bolt. You can use whatever you want. I like the idea of uh, Psybolt, 25% chance of regaining uh, will point so that when will uh, is being spent that we're uh, basically having the chance to get it back and uh, you can activate it uh, for additional four points of damage. So we're rocking a solid nine, 10 points of uh, damage with a relatively high uh, crit chance um, on top of it. So that's the build. Uh, that is uh, the idea of uh, the en weapon enchantment. Let's see how it actually plays out in an actual mission. All right, so we have started to engage uh, the enemies. Our team is here. No pre-buffing uh, needed other than uh, letting uh, the litany uh, in torment of guidance uh, run. I stand corrected, by the way, it's not 55%, but 35%. But nonetheless, yeah. our normal attack, as you can see, um, comes in at 125% crit. So Standing we're good. Uh, so we're now using arcane weapon, as I mentioned. And we're not just going to use it, we're going to warp charge it. This will be three will points. And with that, you can see we're automatically reloading thanks to our high focus. Um, and we now do have a um, nice little shot. And let me just showcase um, what that looks like. So the Titan uh, Roar uh, has a long range penalty of two. Um, but comes in at still 16 base total damage. And on top of that, we're looking at 12 crit damage. So we're already at 28, but here we go. Psychic Onslaught. All right, appreciate that for a moment. Just look at it, look at the beauty of it. Um, whilst we are bombarding this um, with 18 points of damage. We cannot crit on um, AOE, but we can very much um, begin to shoot at all of them. And um, we have dealt so much damage that we almost don't need another arcane weapon um, uh, or arcane weapons in order to finish these guys off. One easy way of uh, handling uh, this here would be by doing this into Psychic Onslaught. Kills the rest. We would be empty. That's a perfect uh, sign for us to use an auto reloader. Good, serve. and since our will points are okay, but not perfect, we're just going to uh, clean up the rest. If you want a second arcane weapon, I couldn't, uh, I could not falter you. That is an option as well. Um, in that case, you want to run a another justice. My point with arcane weapon is. It is such a massive amount of damage already from the get-go that I don't feel it's really needed to have uh, a second uh, a second arcane weapon. You can use sanctified uh, kill zone on top of it or kind of the uh, scouting um, skull in order to just increase the damage by an additional two. But again, that's not really needed. Um, if you fight against single target with the amount of um, of just damage that you're uh, that you're uh, putting out uh, you would hit for 28 and if you attack multi-target uh, you're already hitting for 18 even on super long range as you have seen let's see another pack and see just how well this team uh, destroys everything in their wake all right so <clears throat> we're in the next engagement this time we do have a nice little group of five chaos space marines and we're going to do exactly what, what we have just done I'm before, using arcane weapons. 
preparing with warp charge for a nice little boom. You can see auto reload, everything's good in the hood, and we are going for a nice psychic console. And just look at that one, two, three. Four dead uh, Chaos Space Marines and the Chaos Space Captain in the middle. The tankiest of the bunch dies from the explosion. Do I need to say more, guys? Do I need to say any more? This build or this team composition is impressive in what they are doing. Uh, if you get the right uh, perks together, they are actually quite efficient. Look at that. We still got six willpower left over. If individuals would be standing left over, uh, we would just shoot normally at them and get willpower in the spec. We are overall uh, barely scratching the will point consumption that uh, that these uh, guys are having, and we're already halfway through the mission. So, point being, the arcane enchantment is something that you really should not sleep on if you do it right. We can uh, provide quite a bit of extra damage. Um, bonus points uh, when you're starting off the scouting schools with uh, vulnerability help you to just do the one shots and try to find a weapon that has as big of a explosion as possible because as you can see that huge radius of five really helped us to kill every single one uh, in that massive radius. If you want a little bit more stability for the uh, for the start consider <clears throat> swapping out the chaplain um, for a uh, for a justicar because uh, they can uh, both shift ap and also give another arcane armor um, but uh, with the litany here i just feel that the overall shots once uh, the initial nuke has dropped are more effective Again, what you really, the only thing that you need is the core of uh, uh, the two, the two purchasers. And that typically just clears out the battlefield. That's the reality of it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you would run this particular uh, team composition and if you like what you have seen. Take care and have a good one. See you soon. Bye bye.